100% fake free. This is the Robbie Cruz show, and we're live from my garage. And famous people are gonna sit right there. Nice. 90% of all single use plastic goes to landfill or ends up in our oceans. Unsmother nature. Let it breathe. Lovely set and action, episode one of the Rafi Cruz show. So now, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, but did you see yourself when you were 13, 12? I say that knowing that you were 16 when you made your debut. Yeah. That you would be leading the side, leading the SA Pro Tiers. No, not at all. I think when I was 12 or 13, I was still thinking about high school to go to. Never mind thinking of, you know, what I would do after it or even in between, you know, classes. So, no, it's, it's super cool to be here where I am today. Are you between classes? Are you studying at the moment? Are yes, you, you... I am in my final year of communication science through NISA. So hopefully everything goes well and I can walk away with a degree after this year. You, you grew up in the same area as what I did in Pretoria, which, which is nice. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're as people's people. My yeah. friends. So <laughs> somebody's watching this and they're from them would, <laughs> would probably comment on it. But um, is that like, did that make you who you are? Is that like, I mean, growing up in your, your, your mom, your dad, family life, you know, how was that for you? Yeah, no, I think coming from where we came from, I think there's always an element of, you know, that place staying, staying with you. Um, we actually stay in the house where my dad grew up as a child. So he kind of just build a few, you know, extra rooms and whatnot. So it's a very special place where we play, uh, where we live. And, um, you yeah, know, to grow up there with my parents and my brother, it was so special. And we still live there today. I still live there with them. Can't get myself to move out of that place. <laughs> it's so. difficult. Yeah, no, yeah so think. no, it's, it's super special. Did your parents instill that you have to get a degree? That's actually the reason why I was quite studying. Or did you just yes. go, I want to go play cricket. Cricket is the be all and end all. No, my dad always said, no matter what you go do in life, you have to study as well. Um, you know, injuries can come and go so quickly. So you always have to have a backup plan. So. Yeah, when I made the Proteas, he was like, you can go play cricket, but you still have to come home and do your schoolwork and everything and go make sure after, you know, after grade 12, you're gonna, gonna go, I don't even care what you study, but you're gonna go study something. But being a Proteas cricketer, in, in fact, being a professional cricketer, what's the best part of it? Is it the travel? I mean, you, you, you love traveling. Yeah. From judging from just your Instagram alone. Yeah, no, traveling you know, is, it's literally life. the best. I think it's not just the get on the plane and go see different places. Um, it's definitely the people you meet. Um, I have friends literally all over the world, from the scruffy places in Scotland to somewhere deep in India. Um, I think it's so special just to meet different kind of people and not just the people that, you know, is in your circle where you live. Um, I've been to the IPL and I've made I think 48 new Indian friends and they just the coolest people and without cricket you will never meet them um, So I think definitely the traveling and to see the different places is super cool But I think the most important thing for me is to meet the different people But also speaking of meeting people going to India. I mean is it is it also do you become godlike if you're a cricketer? If you're a cricket it's, player, it's, I can't even describe it. Really like it. It's it. insane. Yeah. I think for Abra de Villiers It's more so <laughs> but <laughs> even just for us. They treat you like you're the best thing there um, You can literally ask for anything you can ask for black young in India and they will make sure they will get it for you um, So no, that place is really incredible. I think there's a reason they call it incredible India um, they just help you wherever they can and it's just literally the nicest people you'll ever meet. Look, you guys are on a good wicket at the moment, excuse, excuse the fun. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in great run of form at the moment just after Pakistan as well, series win there. What's, what's next for you? What, what are you guys aiming at as a team? Um, I think something we've been talking about is, is, you know, getting a winning streak going. I think it's so important when you look at the Australian women's team, they had a, an ODI winning streak of over 20 games. And I think it's so important for, you know, for the girls to, to build confidence. And if you get into a winning habit, that will happen more regularly, I think. So I think we're on a winning streak of six games at the moment, coming from our New Zealand series last year and, and the Pakistan series now. So hopefully when we go to India, we have five ODIs. So just to keep that going. Oh, that's amazing. And then also with, I mean, stuff that you'd like to achieve, uh, are, are there any like goals that you set for yourself? Like, I want to make so many hundreds, I want to do this, I want to do that. Yeah. Or is that just all, I focus on the team when I'm there? No, it's, it's definitely, I definitely have goals. I think for the Pakistan series now, I wanted to achieve 100 wickets um, and I did that. And I think 
one more goal for me for this series is I'm number 13 at the moment in the world all-rounder rankings and that's definitely I want to break into the top 10 so I think it's a great opportunity now in India to do that. Well you're always as competitive right you are I watch you on TV yeah. I watch you <laughs> spinning and I think to myself so now I don't want to face you right? I'm not gonna I'm gonna look like an idiot when I do but so that's that that's like do you I mean I don't know yeah I think growing up with a brother yeah. yeah growing up with a brother you kind of have to be competitive you're not gonna let <laughs> yeah. him win and all his friends coming over you're not gonna give them the satisfaction of beating me so I think growing up it made me a competitive person but at the end of the day you know you also realize that it's just a game um and everything 30 seconds like yeah work. everything so like when the family gets together it's balls oh, to yeah. the wall yeah. yeah no definitely um but yeah like i said <laughs> at the end of the day it's it's it, you know it's just a game and life is there's more you know more to life but um you still want to win you i don't like losing at all so if if i can win in anything i would <laughs> Yeah. yeah so your debut when you were 16 years yeah. old like surely i mean when you were there in menlo park absolute menlo excuse me it's the worst called menlo park it's not just menlo park it's not that anymore but a uh, great school and uh, yeah. i went i was at a crossroad at boys high so yeah. we, we always loved it whenever we had a function or a sports event against you guys yeah. but I mean, 12, 13 years old, uh, did you, when you looked forward and then you became 16 or you turned 16 years old and then you played for South Africa. Take me through that. Like, oh, anyway, how yeah. is that to experience for anyone, not just a guy cricketer, a woman cricketer, any professional yeah. sportsman? No, I think when I went to Menlo, um, the coach there, Arjen van Beek, we set goals and we said, okay, when I turned 18, there's a World Cup because um, that World Cup was already set in stone and we said okay I want to be on that tour that's when I want to make my debut because you never think you're going to make a debut before that because you're still so young. Almost 18 is almost like what you put in your head. Always. Yeah I don't know, that's, but, uh, that was what the goal was and I was uh, missing math classes just to go train for when I you know when that World Cup comes um, and I think I was still sitting in a biology class and I got a phone call and they said listen you got to go, you got to start packing now, we're going to Bangladesh. Um, it was just, it was so surreal now thinking back, it's it's next level, you don't expect that at all. Oh, amazing. So for show and tell, you brought us something along. This is a little thing we do on the show yeah. uh, every second week. So, as, not to be doing any product placement for Wilson, but it's a nice, <laughs> nice tennis brand. And it's a tennis shoe. It's it not is actually, a tennis shoe. Not your first cricket shoe, which no. I, would, uh, I would have expected when I saw you walk into the garage. This no, morning. this is actually nothing to do with cricket, but it's, I think it's something that made me who I am today. Mm. I think this is a, a grade six shoe when I was 12. Um, we used to go play in Sun City tennis tournaments. I love tennis. Oh, yeah. Um, Did you ever play those ones at, at Crincliffe at tennis courts? Those yes. Those round-robin matches, remember yes. those? You'd spend the whole weekend yes, there. Yes, that was the Amazing. best. Yeah. Oh. Um, of course, Blick and there you go. No, like, your mom just dropped you people. off, see you later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, it was great. Yeah. Um, so we were in Sun City and um, I played against, she was, I can't remember the name, but she was the number two ranked in SA at the moment, um, 413, so she was a year ahead of me. Um, she was smashing me all over the court. Um, I learned to topspin the ball and to play nicely and she just came at it and smashed it. And I think I was one set down and in the break my coach came to me, he was like, don't try and spin her slash, just slash it back, just go for it. And I remember beating her, you know, three, three yeah, two sets to one, um, the number two ranked in SA and I think that was a moment for me when I realized that you literally can achieve anything oh. if you just you know, give it back to them or whatever. That's good. That's <laughs> so that was, story. and this was the shoe I did it in. I actually yeah. had very big feet when I was 12. Yeah, anyway. Well, <laughs> there you go. So if you're worried about having big feet, you probably have to get in a country one. Day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, so that was a super the, the cool moment wall, for me. Yeah. yeah, so that was a super cool tournament and a day for me just to realize that no matter who you're playing against, you know, she can be number two in the world or number two in South Africa, you can still beat her if you just, you know, bring it and... Give it to her. If, if you would, I, I don't want to say this, oh, so if you've got any advice for the yeah. youngsters out there. But seriously though, I mean, the youngsters yeah. are the future, they really are. And you started at a very young age. Yeah. So what advice do you have for somebody that's good? 
Yeah. Like that's not, I'm not saying somebody that's not going to make it. Look, I mean, your parents tell you you're good, but yeah. it's just, you're really not that good. Yeah. Like, you're actually good. There are some people that have got a future. What do you tell yeah. them? Yeah. I think it's so important for young girls playing. That's extremely good. You know, you are going to, you are going to experience a lot of stuff in life and you are going to, you know, get a lot of wickets and runs and everything. But I think the most important part is just to enjoy every single thing. Because I think a cricketer's or a sport person's career is only so long. And if you go through it, just getting to the next match and just getting through it, um, you know, that's going to be, I don't want to look at my career when I retire and think, I just went, I just got through it. I wanted to enjoy every single moment. And that's something, you know, I lost it a bit for two, three years, but now it's something I got back. And it's an unbelievable feeling to just go out there and just do this one thing that you literally love. Yeah, so... And just you're not enjoy. Doing what you love. It's crazy. I know. Uh, it's like you're playing, like you said earlier. I mean, okay, I talk for a living, mm. <laughs> so, which is also still weird. Like, yeah. On radio and so on. But I mean, you you play your favorite sport. You you went to a school. You went to a high school. You researched a high school because you play cricket. Yeah. Like, you know, that's that's your be all and end all. No, it's like the cliche saying: if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I literally get to play cricket for a living and make a living out of it. Um, and I think that's something that when I was when I started playing, there wasn't that wasn't an option. Um, you never thought you would make a salary out of cricket. Um, so that's something so cool. At the moment, you get to do what you love, and you still get to make money out of it sure, in the process. Great. So yeah. it's no, it's freaking great, yeah. And the parentals are they, no. are they excited <laughs> for you? Are they are they also work means, sir? Yeah, they yeah, are. Plot of the order. Like, yeah. yeah. Plot of the order means, are they not? No, so, my mom. Um, yeah, no, she she always says when she watches a game and she sees me walk out, she can immediately immediately see if I'm you know gonna play well today or not gonna play well. And if she knows I'm gonna play well, she doesn't want to see it because she doesn't want to jinx it. Then she just walks and doesn't want. She never watches a match. How are all moms like that? Though? I don't know, but I just want to ask her. Can you just? Give me a phone call if you see that I'm going to do well or not well and just listen bench her today. She's <laughs> not going to do well. Like, she's going to go Just to save like me the embarrassment. Oh, um, so no, nice. but my dad is a die-hard cricket fan. He'll, like you said, you'll watch any, any school sport. rugby game, whatever. He'll literally do the same. He just loves it. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So he was always, he was always there on the sidelines. Like oh, the he literally box. quit his job just to... It's amazing. Yeah, he had a nice corporate job, anything he would want. And he just said, listen, he's missing spishwe, he's missing tennis, he's missing netball, he's missing swimming, he's missing everything. And he just quit it and he said he just wanted to sit next to the field and just watch us grow up and just watch us beat everyone. So, no, it's super cool. Look, it changes everything. I get goosebumps when you yeah. say that because like, I'm obviously the father of a little two-year-old. Yeah, And no, she's insane. my life as well. So, yeah. I, I want to say, personally, from my side, like, thanks for what you do for women's cricket, for women's no, sport in South Africa. I, think it, I really think it's amazing. I mean, I Googled you the other day and I was like, if I get half as many stuff written about me, one day, I'll be like famous, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love I to see Lara one any, day no, you, she's gonna on be TV. You she better know. be there. And know. if you want to coach, mm. you know, yeah, I'm, gonna pull, I'm pull free. All the strings, yeah, all the yeah. strings. But what your dad says is truth. That's all I want to do is I just yeah. want to see her grow up. Because like, I don't feel like I've achieved. There's a lot of things I want to achieve in life yeah. still. But, you know, I want to see her doing what yeah. she's going to achieve. Yeah, no, it changes you. It's super it cool. Really does. Yeah. So I'm not plastic. It is um, it's it is what it is. Yeah. But what is it to you? Um, I think I'm not plastic reminds me of the word people. Um, I don't think there's any pretending they're going on. There's no fake people. It's just when the mask gets taken off, it's it's who you are. Um, so funny are the men. So. So it's funny, yeah. well, no, that's <laughs> Today, my Ali Engels for the obviously all the viewers yeah. and so on. And I know there's a lot of people in India that follow your career, a lot of people in Australia and so on. So uh, for those purposes, but thank you very much for coming and no, appreciate it's a pleasure. it. Thank um, you. We, we your first interview. I need you to sign that off now for okay. the next time we win a World Cup. Yeah, so we no, win 100%. A World Cup, yeah, you get the first interview. hopefully next year. That's all I want. Yeah, amazing. Definitely. Thanks. Thank you so and much. And you're gonna sign something for us as well. Yes. Thank you. Which is this? And where is this from, by the way? This is from last year's World Cup and New Zealand series when we whitewashed them for the first time in history. That was <laughs> and, and a did. great feeling. And, did, yeah. um, and we got robbed of our semi final <laughs> in the World Cup with Duckworth Lewis, but we won't get into that. No, we don't um, spell Duckworth Lewis with an F. 
yeah i don't know how that works but yeah this is the cap i wore throughout warm-ups and everything when i was sitting next to the field so oh, amazing super but that's special. Part yeah of the studio as well definitely and, uh, yeah. yeah it's really great having you on the show thank you so much yeah awesome. thanks cool i am snailies and i'm not plastic Hi guys, I'm Kugule Tunjalane. We are Broken Villages. villages. I am not plastic. Yay! Yay! Please welcome on the Robbie Crew show for the very first time, guys, that we have been collaborating with Broken Villages, Kugaletu and Mpumulelu. I got that right, I did not. Yeah, yeah, you there did. You go, gentlemen. It's been great working with you guys, but who are Broken Villages? For our viewers, explain. <laughs> yes, uh. Basically, Broken Villages is two young artists, me and Bumilelo. We from Soweto. I guess I, I don't want to. I don't, don't want you to hear it from my mouth. I want you to hear it from you guys. When I'm not plastic, approach you guys. What was the brief? What were you guys told? Like, well, obviously, we collaborated <laughs> together, but what were you guys told to do? To visualize the um, the what's this? The the waste pickers in the plastic pickers. And yeah, waste pickers, yes, the yeah. waste pickers. He, 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 he felt that they were unfiltered and they lived a fake free life so he wanted he wanted the I am not plastic to be to be to be portrayed in the in that in that environment and stuff like that so that was the brief that we got so he said just be creative and to creative guys like you yeah. it's pretty easy I mean you went out <laughs> and you did your thing but by the way you have to go and check some of the photos on I'm not plastic I'll share some of them as well but on Instagram they've done an incredible collaboration with us uh, Broken Villages, you guys also on social media, that's where we yeah. follow you. So that is that where we can get more of the story as well. Yes. Yeah, Broken Broken Villages on Instagram and then uh, we also have a page on Pixels. It's Broken Villages, also on Pinterest it's Broken Villages. Mm -hmm. So those are the only social platforms we're on. Well, now you're on YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah. So on the Robbie Crew show, thanks. it's massive. Yeah, okay. thanks to I'm not plastic. Because <laughs> yeah. we're not plastic, because we're not. Yeah. All right, guys, but I look forward to working, doing a lot with you. I just did a lot more with you guys. I think uh, we'll check in uh, in a couple of weeks and see where we're at, you know, uh, mm. check what collaboration we're busy with and uh, what photos you guys come up with. Really excited. Thanks, appreciate Look forward to it. <laughs> Broken Villages. We'll see what they got.